Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Uh, probably not the most entertaining Let's Play video that's going to happen in a while because this game is just, ugh, it's not very entertaining. Uh, this is Twin Eagle, Revenge Joe's brother. Who Joe is, I have no freaking clue. Uh, let's just jump right into the game. It is, uh, ugh. So, Twin Eagle uh, is a port of uh, the arcade game by the same name, and um, I actually like the arcade game quite a lot. It was one of the earliest arcade games uh, to sort of have like this really high quality sampled, uh, you know, soundtrack, and you know, from the music to the uh, the sound effects and so forth. It's just uh, kind of a feast on the ears for. For, I guess, I don't even remember when the arcade game came out. It was like 87 or 88 or something like that. Um, this NES version is apparently 1989. By 89 standards, it is nothing terribly impressive, actually. Um, the NES version actually differs quite a bit um, from the arcade version and how it implements certain things like uh, how your power-up system works. Uh, a lot of the level design is actually different as well, like this battleship. Uh, you don't start on a battleship level in the arcade version of the game. Now, you do go through similar locations as you do in the arcade version, but... Uh, like, I believe you actually do go to a battleship in the arcade game, but it's it's much later in the game. It's not the first level of the game like it is in, in this one. Um, so, once I sort of get settled in here and get powered up, one of the big things about the NES version of Twin Eagle is... Uh, if you are not powered up, this game is stupid hard. Uh, if you are powered up, this game is stupid easy. And, um... So what I'm trying to do here is just get powered up first. I actually picked up two speed power-ups, and I highly recommend getting at least one speed power-up. Uh, because your, your chopper is almost useless without it. It is insanely slow. And, um... So you definitely want to get your first speed power-up. Uh, these little, like, balloons that are dropped with uh, the number one icon, those actually act as bombs. Uh, and you, you activate those by pressing the A button. Now, that's actually much different than the arcade version. In the arcade version, those balloons are dropped, but they change your main firepower to these missiles. So, in the arcade version of Twin Eagle, you only had two forms of firepower. You had your main shot, which you, you saw me start off with in the very beginning of this game. Uh, you could upgrade that slowly. Um, to say more of a spread shot. Um, and then by picking up the balloons in the arcade version, uh, it would actually turn your main shot into these missiles. And now the benefit of the missiles in the arcade one is that it would cut through multiple enemies at once, whereas your, your standard shot would get absorbed by whatever, you know, you were hitting with it. Um, uh, but in this game, you have a power-up system uh, reminiscent of other... Uh, more common shooters where, you know, you'll see like a letter icon on the play field and in this game you can shoot it to alternate the weapon that it gives you. And you actually have a few more weapons in this game um, than you do in the arcade one. So I've actually picked up the rocket weapon uh, or missiles, whatever you want to call it. It actually kind of has that cut through property that the missiles do in the arcade game. But there's also like a reverse shot you can get where your shot goes backwards. Um, there is a actual W shot for, you know, like wide shot, I'm guessing, but it's basically a spread shot. Um, and then you've also got, uh, your standard shot once more. Uh, but you've also got, uh, speed up and speed down power-ups. In the arcade version, I believe there was only speed up power-ups. There were no speed down power-ups, if I recall correctly, in the arcade game. And in the arcade version, it was actually really difficult. Uh, to speed up. The speed up power-ups didn't come out that often, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so the power-up system is a little bit different in this game. So these balloons are actual screen-clearing bombs. So, let's just say, press A right now. Everything dies on screen, including uh, projectiles. So it's actually very important to, uh, to save your bombs. Uh, the biggest reason is that uh, when you die, you lose all your power-ups. You go right back to stage one. And so what I'm going to be trying to do is not die through this playthrough. And I'm going to be saving my bombs until I really need them. You know, in emergency scenarios. Kind of like that. I, that wasn't really an emergency situation, but I, I didn't feel really that comfortable 
trying to dodge through those bullets. Uh, one thing that's really wonky about this game, well, aside from everything, um, <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. Um, one thing that's kind of wonky in this game is is the bullets. You'll notice the bullets are these multicolored shots. They they alternate from from red to yellow. Uh, they don't scroll across the screen nice and smooth like like everything else does in the game. You'll notice that like the screen scrolling is fine, my bullet scrolling is fine, my my chopper moves across the playfield nice and smooth uh, at a rock solid. You know, it's basically 60 frames a second. But the enemy projectiles don't. They like skip across the screen slow, and, and it, it's kind of hard on the eyes. And then with them constantly alternating colors, it actually is quite quite difficult on the eyes, unfortunately. Especially once you've got a lot of bullets on screen, they're all just flashing back and forth from red to yellow, and moving at this like sub 60 frame rate. They just kind of like skip across the screen, and uh, it's like I said, it's, it's just tough on the eyes. So now, as far as about, you know, my comment saying everything else is... <laughs> everything else about this game is wonky, it's just... This is, to me, a very mediocre shmup on the NES. I, I really like the arcade version, and even the arcade version wasn't really phenomenal, but it has elements that, um, differ it. Like, good elements that differ it from the competition at the time, like the huge sprites, massive explosions for, for the year it came out. Uh, the, the new, the, the then new sampled audio, um, like you get to a bonus stage, like right here, or not bonus stage, but bonus segment, uh, in the arcade version, it would pump out with this, like, it's heavy, like rock track, it was just high energy, um, almost like the Top Gun theme, it was really cool. Uh, the NES version doesn't have that at all, and it's just, ugh. It's not a visual treat, it's not an auditory treat, it's just a very mediocre experience for the NES, if you ask me. Uh, I, I really don't recommend playing this game. I, I'm really doing this Let's Play just because, like, it's, it's a game I can get through, and I just, I was just like, ugh. I'm gonna probably eventually have to do this game, so it's like I might as well just practice it and 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 actually do a let's play on it. Uh, so yeah, the gameplay is also quite um, quite repetitive. Uh, it doesn't really ever get that exciting, especially once you're powered up like this. Like these missiles, especially, they just cut through everything. And, uh, god, the main music in the game, um, this theme just plays through the entire game. It's, uh, not a very good backing theme. Ooh, I almost died there. I gotta watch out for that, because if I do die, it's gonna be actually be really tough to recover. Yeah, the game's, the game's visuals aren't really that interesting. I mean, there were shooters that came before this that were much more interesting looking than this. Um, this really looks like the kind of game that was like... <laughs> I don't know, kind of like some of those later Genesis, like, um, Made in China shoot 'em ups that are, just look terrible and they play horribly. And they sound awful. It kind of reminds me of that, but it's not that, you know. Okay, so something uh, to keep in mind about this game when you're playing is there's these... Uh, green turrets, these sort of like green tank turrets that shoot these homing missiles at you. They are the most annoying enemies in the game, uh, the most dangerous enemies in the game too. They were in the arcade game, um, and I guess technically that's one of the uh, few things that was actually translated like completely accurately from the arcade game, is those green turret tank things is the homing missiles they fire out are insanely difficult to avoid unless you're fully sped up. Not fully sped up? I'm not even close to being fully sped up. That's another thing. I'm. Uh, we might have to start a new game just so I can show you how crazy fast you get. Um, but yeah, you have to really watch out for the, the homing turrets. And uh, they will definitely catch you off guard. And that's what I like to save my bombs for. Uh, if the homing turrets start firing, you can use your bomb, and it'll clear everything off the screen, including the turret itself.
And so what you really want to do is, if you're, if you're actually trying to beat this game legit, and you know, like you're trying to actually get through the game, um, you need to make sure you're focusing on those turrets. That's really one of the, the main points of contention about this game in terms of survival, is dealing with those turrets. Like, there they are. It's nicer when you can actually um, just happen to hit the turret, like, right as it comes on the screen. But if if you don't, it's going to shoot out its missiles. And then... Um, you're going to pretty much have to use a bomb, most likely. Now here's the reverse shot. A little, a little funky. One of the things about it is that you don't actually get... Uh, in front of enemies very often in this game. And one of the things about it is that it's, it's just, it's a weak shot for the most part. So I prefer to, to just use these missiles. There's also the, uh, the W shot, which is basically a three-way spread shot. It's not insanely useful either. Because, uh, the width on it isn't that much better than, uh, you know, these fully powered up missiles. Good, got another balloon, that's another bomb. So yeah, I really prefer to just use these missiles because they just cut through everything. It's just one shot will go through everything on the screen. You don't even have to mash, you can just do one at a time and... So one of these days, what I'll have to do is actually fire up Mame and maybe try the uh, try doing a let's play of the arcade version, so I can show you guys what that game is like. Um, if I ever get an arcade cabinet in the future that has a vertical monitor set up, I'd, I'd love to get the uh, the original arcade board of that. And uh, I do know that it's a relatively common shooter uh, in the arcade. Um, I actually saw multiple machines growing up. And I've seen machines uh, of Twin Eagle for sale in the area over the last few years. And they're always cheap. They're always like a couple hundred bucks for the full arcade cabinet. They're not expensive. It's not a shmup that's like a fan favorite in the arcade, but it, it, I like it quite a bit. Um, maybe it's because I saw it as a kid and I've got some nostalgia for it, but... It, it is really cool looking. Like, it definitely looks good for the time. It's a great looking game for the time. I, uh, unlike the NES version. Uh, the NES really was a system that shouldn't have had a port of Twin Eagle. Like, if you guys, uh, I mean, feel free to check out, like, a YouTube video of the arcade game of Twin Eagle. Or if you've got MAME, fire it up in that so you can just kind of see what I'm talking about. And then go and look at this game, this version of it, and you'll just be like, wow. Why did they even port it to the NES? Like, you, you look at the arcade game, it's not a game that was meant for a system like the NES. Um, uh, really, they, they should have tried porting it to something like the, the Genesis, or they should have tried porting it to, like, you know, uh, some of the more powerful Japanese computers of the time. They would have been able to do it justice. Uh, but the NES, no. I understand the NES was the most popular platform at the time, uh, so it makes sense from that perspective, but from the perspective of trying to have a quality version, home version of your arcade game, um, this was not the way to do it, unfortunately. Now, some other, uh, you know, arcade shooters that probably shouldn't have been ported to the NES, you know, they kind of got away with it, like Twin Cobra is, is, a, is an example. It's kind of wonky on the NES, but it, it plays well, and it moves quickly, and it's, it has a lot going on. Uh, Twin Eagle on the NES, unfortunately, does not. It also uses the exact same theme for the entire game. The entire game, it's just, oof, man. So we're actually working our way through the game. Um, 
So the city-esque levels, those were uh, pretty much the end of the arcade game. So we're getting close to the end of the game. I don't think this version loops. I think it's just you go through it once and that's it. Uh, when I did my practice sessions for this, I, I did not actually beat the game. I got to the end, uh, I died, and, um, you know, I'm pretty sure this game gives you unlimited continues to a certain point. I was just, like, credit feeding my way through the game, got to the final boss, died, and then just got a game over. It didn't let me continue. So, either the game doesn't have unlimited continues, or it, um... It's one of those games where when you get to the final boss, it doesn't actually let you continue. There are some games out there, especially some arcade games from the time period, that did that to keep the player from credit feeding through the game. Uh, time Soldiers, uh, the arcade version, is one of those games that does that. Actually, I think the Master System version does that too. So basically, you can go through the whole game, continue as many times as you want, until you get to the final level, and then uh, the game doesn't allow you to continue anymore. So that's a possibility, actually. If somebody knows for sure, uh, as always, post a comment below. And let me know. See, that homing missile is coming after me. And what sucks is when there's a lot going on on screen, I found that uh, the bomb function is very unresponsive. See, you can see how that missile is just chasing after me. I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. Alright, so this part, uh, this is the final boss. It's basically just the building. And that's it. And we'll see if the game loops. That's it, yeah. <laughs> You've just beaten the evil monster who was sent to destroy the Earth. Put out the fire of hatred. <laughs> people should not fight against people and be in fear of the shadow of evil monsters. The eternal peace was given to every corner of Earth by one brave fighter. Thank you for the job, well done. Oh, God. I re actually remember that. I think that's actually from the arcade game as well. I remember that, and reading that for the first time, and just having, like, a WTF face. Like, wow. You never would have guessed, like, that was the story of the game, just by, you know, playing the game. You're... <laughs> so that's Twin Eagle Revenge Joe's brother. It's, it's a pretty awful NES shmup, to be honest with you guys. It's... It does have the benefit of being two players at the same time. That's actually something I did not mention. Uh, it is two players at the same time. Um, but it's it's not really even worth playing with the second friend. Um, let me actually show you something uh, real quick. Jeez, you know, I actually spent less time at Twin Eagle than I did Twin Cobra on the NES. Um... What we're gonna do is I wanna see if I can get some speed power-ups going here. And unfortunately, I sort of borked my first speed power-up. But maybe I can show you how fast we get in this game. You get insanely fast in this game. And it's one of the dumbest design choices I, I have seen in a shoot-em-up from this time period. So there we go. We're pretty quick now. Uh, but I'm not lying when I say this is just the start of uh, the speed in this game. It feels like the uh, the power-ups are uh, increased. Like the, the amount of power-up drops seem to be increased. Maybe because it thinks I'm still in two-player mode. Let's see if we can get another power-up drop here.
So I got another speed up power. Look at that. And it keeps going. It keeps going. <laughs> Look at how fast I am. Yeah, it actually seems like the game uh, throws out more enemies when you've got a second player on screen. So maybe what you what you should do to make the game more interesting is to um, start a two-player game, let the player two die, and you'll notice it still says continue on the right, like it's asking the player to continue, and it doesn't look like that's going to time out. But it feels like there's more enemies now. Unfortunately, it doesn't really help the other lacking aspects of the game, like kind of the mediocre visuals, the um, the insanely mundane soundtrack. But uh, it does make the gameplay a little more interesting when you have to actually worry about what you're doing on screen. So yeah, we're crazy fast right now, and it, it actually gets faster than this. And so what I recommend doing in this game is picking up no more than two speed-up power-ups. Otherwise, you, you kind of turn into crackhead mode like this. Where you're just bouncing off the walls. Alright, so let's see if we can get another power-up or two. Uh, if not, then uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, stop the Let's Play. Since we've already finished the game... And the game definitely does not loop. We'll go ahead and just take the missiles for now, just in case. Yeah, it feels like there's a lot more in the way of power-up drops. Alright, so I got another speed-up power-up. Look at this. Oh. It's crazy. Any more power-ups? Any more? There we go. So... That's probably about as fast as you get in the game. I actually think it keeps increasing. Varies very slowly. But yeah, that's that's Twin Eagle for the NES guys. We're gonna go ahead and just kill ourselves. And now look at how slow I move. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> and this is uh, what makes the game very difficult when you die, is that uh, you're so slow your firepower kind of sucks, and they don't replenish your bombs either. It's like, uh, shoot -em bombs that had bombs, usually what they'll do is they'll give you at least a bomb or two back after you die. Um, and the reason they do that is so you have a chance at survival, basically. You know, because um, it can be uh, insanely difficult to recover uh, in, in a classic old school style shoot -em up uh, you know, you say you get far into the game, you're fully powered up, you die, you come back out, no power-ups. Uh, especially a game like this, or Gradius, or something like that, where you have speed power-ups too, you're, you're really slow after you die. Um, it's just really tough to recover, and that's why shoot -em ups will oftentimes give you a couple of bombs after you die. So, you know, even if it's tough to get power-ups, you can at least try to tough it out, use a bomb when you have to, which will allow you to advance a little bit farther uh, and until hopefully you get a power up which will get you back up on your feet. Um, so yeah, that is Twin Eagle Revenge Joe's Brother. 
Um, really cool arcade game, a really crappy NES game. Uh, I don't really recommend picking this one up if you're a collector, and, and if you're just a curious gamer, I don't even really recommend playing it, uh, especially if you just watch me play it. Like, there's no reason to spend any more of your uh, your life with this game. It's just, it's, it's mediocre uh, in all ways, pretty much. Um, many, many better shoot-em-ups on the NES to play. You know, games like uh, Gradius, you know, Life Force, Abadox... Twin Cobra, stuff like that. Uh, stay away from this game. It's not good. Um, but do play the arcade version. Try the arcade version. It is, uh, it's interesting. Uh, unfortunately, the NES version is not. I don't think we ever got another port of this game that's closer to the arcade game. And um, I don't think it ever happened. I don't think even like the obscure Japanese computers got it, which is kind of a shame because they could have been able to handle the arcade version. Um, if they did and anybody knows, feel free to post a comment below and as, as usual, just definitely let me know. I'm curious. So, uh, but all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I'll catch you guys soon. And, uh, until then, take it easy.